Hello again. We're solving linear systems with elimination, and generally students like this method the best, at least when they first explore it. Uh, they like it the best because the problems in the books and in the test are set up so it's easy. That's why students like it. I wouldn't advise you just to use a linear, uh, excuse me, elimination. It's also called uh, linear combinations. I just say whatever is called right is right. So if you can do it correctly, great. But uh, students like this method. And they only want to stay with this method after they learn it. They don't want to learn substitution. They don't want to learn graphing. I would advise you to get good at all three of them and have, have decent competence. I mean, it's fine if you favor one over the other, but you need to know how to do all. You know, the analogy I use in my classroom is like, um, I have a lot of students who want to be great basketball players when they grow up. And I try to uh, make them understand that all three ways are fantastic, but they don't always believe me, so I say, you know, um, in order to be a great basketball player, what do you need? And then they, they tell me the list of characteristics that you have to have good control, you have to dribble, you have to be able to shoot, you have to have quickness, speed, good hand-eye coordination, etc. And I say, well, okay, good. If you were just shooting baskets all day and you were the best shooter in the world, but you didn't have good handling ability or good speed or good quickness, would you be on the starting five? And they say, well, I mean, if you could shoot well, I'm like, besides just shooting well, I mean, you couldn't do anything else, but you could just shoot. I'm like, well, maybe not. I say, exactly. I mean, if you want to be successful, you've got to be good at everything you're doing in terms of solving linear systems. So even though you might like elimination the best, you should focus on graphing and substitution as well. With that said, uh, don't mean to uh, drown down your hopes there, but you should be good at all three of them, not just one. So when we're solving linear systems with elimination or linear combinations, what we actually do, pardon me, is we add um, whole equations together to cancel out uh, specific terms. And what I mean by that is we're going to eliminate. So I'm looking at this first one, and before I get to it, I should mention something very uh, quickly. When you're using elimination, you have to line up your x's, you have to line up your y's, you have to line up your equals, and you have to line up your numbers. Uh, that's the first step in elimination. You have to line everything up nicely. So make sure you do that. Well, this one is lined up very nicely. X's are together, Y's are together, equal signs are together, and numbers are together. So it's perfectly fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add these. Technically, you could also subtract, but I found that in my uh, career as a teacher, uh, subtracting, you're going to lose students. So you just tell them to always add it, and, and it works better. Uh, trust me on that one. It really does. So I'm going to add these two equations together, and I have 2x plus negative 2x, which is 0. 2 minus 2x is 0, so they cancel. And I don't tell them to erase it, I just say they cancel. Now I say 3y plus positive 5y is 8y. And 11 plus 13 is 24. Again, what we're doing is we're finding out where these two graphs cross. When we find, figure out our x and y value, that's where they cross on the x and y axis. So 8 times y equals 24, I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides. y equals 3. Now all I do is I substitute this 3 in for a y into either one of the two equations. And then students ask, does it matter which one you pick? And I say, no. Uh, is it going to be easier or more difficult? And I said, depends what you figure out to be more easy or difficult. And then say, OK, I'm going to do it for this one. This one looks like it's easier. I'm like, good, good call. So we're going to substitute into the first one, but you could substitute into the second one. So 2x plus 3 times y, but y is 3, so it's 3 times 3 equals 11. That's 2x plus 9 equals 11. Subtract 9 on both sides and then divide, excuse me, then divide by 2. Two times x equals two, divide by two. X equals one. Pretty convenient, nice and organized. I think that's why students really like it. It's not uh, necessarily because it's easier or difficult, but you can just kind of continue it and like, yeah, that's I like that. That looks pleasant. It doesn't look like it's difficult. Maybe that's why students like it. So I'm gonna write it in coordinate form. My x goes first, then my y. And these two equations will intersect at 1, 3. You could solve them for y and graph them if you want to, but I promise you they intersect there. 
Not all elimination problems, though, are pleasant. This one is an example of one that's not as pleasant. And there are a couple reasons why. First of all, they're not even lined up. I've got x minus y equals a number. I've got y equals x plus a number. So what I want to do is make sure I get the x on this side. Or you could subtract the x on that side. But let's put all the x's on one side and get it set equal to a number. That's probably the best and easiest way. So I'm going to subtract 3x from this equation. And what I get is negative 3x plus 4y equals 14. And here's my other equation, 4x minus 2y equals negative 2. Now, sometimes students who don't really know what they're doing with elimination go ahead and add these two up. They say, oh, I got it, it's good. Uh, no, that's not it. Because if you add them up, you're going to get 1x, or you're going to get 2y, and you're going to get 12. The point of elimination, or linear combinations, depending what your own teacher calls it, is to eliminate one of the variables. So what i got to do is i got to manipulate it some more. And so, oh, I don't, well, elimination's not bad, but you got to realize that it's not that easy, that there are more steps to it. So what I want to do is I want to cancel out one of the x's or y's. And here's where I ask my students. I say, okay, you can either get the x numbers to be the same, the opposite same, or the same numbers but opposite signs, or you can get the y, the numbers in front of y, the coefficients, to be the same numbers but opposite signs. And I say, well, what would you have to turn 3 and 4 into so you would have to get them to be the same numbers. And then somebody says, it's 12. Okay, so if I want to make this a negative 12, I've got to multiply it by 4. If I want to make this a positive 12, I've got to multiply it by 3. I've got to play around with both equations. No, not fun. Uh, what can I make 4 and 2 so they're the same number? The answer is 4. One of them has to be positive and the other has to be negative. And the reason why is so when I add them, they'll uh, eliminate. Well, that's already 4, so I don't got to worry. I've got to make that a negative 4. How do I make that a negative 4? So you say, well, don't you multiply by 2? And the answer is, yeah, multiply by 2. But I can't just multiply one term in the equation by 2. I've got to multiply the whole thing. I've got to multiply this whole thing by 2 and this whole thing by 2. And what I show my students is this. Just make a bracket and distribute the 2 in every term, and then you'll balance the equation because now it will be times 2 here times 2 there. So when I do that, 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times negative 2y is negative 4y. Don't forget the equals. A lot of students forget that. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So I rewrote this one. Finally, I'm going to rewrite this one. And here's where I add the two equations together. Now, some of you might be arguing, well, there isn't there any, yeah, there's always an easier way to do it, but this is on an elimination problem, so we're going to just do it how we do it on this one. I would probably, I, I might, no, I wouldn't use substitution. That'd be brutal here. I'm going to add 8x plus negative 3x is 5x. Negative 4y plus 4y cancels at 0y, which is 0, equals negative 4 plus 14, which is 10. Finally, we got to something that's, you know, kind of close to the answer. 5 times x equals 10, so divide by 5 on both sides. x equals 2. Now what I want to do is I want to substitute it into an equation. Uh, does it matter which one of these equations? No. I could actually substitute it into one of those two or one of those two. But it's your choice what you want to do. Uh, for the sake of just keeping things consistent, I'm going, to solve, I'm going to substitute into one of these two, either the first or the second. And here's where I usually ask my students to pick, and then somebody just yells something out. So I say, okay, we're going to do it into the first one. So we're going to substitute into the first one. 8x minus 4y equals negative 4. But x is actually 2, so that's where I substitute that value in. Eight times two minus four y equals negative four. Sixteen minus four y equals negative four. Subtract sixteen on both sides, and here's where I'll actually have students make a mistake. 
negative 4y equals negative 4 plus negative 16 is negative 20. A lot of times I'll get negative 12. And then the student does all that work, messes up, and I have to take a point off. Divide by negative 4 on both sides. y equals negative divided by negative is a positive. 20 divided by 4 is 5. But some of you watching this might say, oh, I hate math. So boring or it's so difficult. This is why I hate it. I, I'm sympathetic to that, too. I understand that you do all these steps just to get to this small answer. And it is annoying for a lot of students, especially if you do all this work and you mess up on one step. That's why you just have to have a clear understanding of how to do things carefully. And don't rush through the problem. But just do it carefully. And if you have time, substitute back in. But I am sympathetic to the point of that. That's why if this problem were worth five or six points and you make a mistake there, I'd probably just take off half a point. But if you make a mistake early, then it kind of affects the whole problem. Uh, not the most pleasant elimination problem, but like I said, not all elimination problems are easy. Uh, my advice to you is you pick the one that you're most comfortable with. You, you have to be good at all three, but if the direction doesn't specify which one you have to solve by, you do what you think will be easiest. That's easier said than done. That takes practice in math. But still, you got to practice. Uh, with that said, I hope you found that helpful and not too, too difficult. But, you know, I understand that it's also just a little difficult at the same time. But, you know, you got to keep trying. Okay. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.